Hey guys, after 300 hours of printing, I finally have the most difficult, time-consuming part of the build done. I have all these parts printed out, and I'm gonna take you guys along and show you guys how to do it. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you guys aren't already subscribed. I'm gonna be showing you guys the full uh, build process of this 152, uh, any problems I've had with it, and uh, ultimately a maiden flight. So one of the first things you want to do is go to 3 Lab Prints uh, page, check out their airplanes, uh, find one that you want to build. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and build this uh, 152. Uh, on this page there's just some videos and some pictures of the plane, uh, the price, but most importantly it has this uh, user guide. Go ahead and click and download that before you even uh, buy a print or anything. You can just check this out. It's free. You don't have to buy the plane or anything. Uh, and It has information uh, in the user guide on how to build it. Uh, it has all the specs of the airplane, wing dimensions, all the different motors, so you can really get a cost breakdown of everything that you're going to have to need before you even start building the plane. It has a little history on there, and then it starts talking about how to build it. So the first step uh, is to print out all these parts. It's definitely the hardest and most time-consuming part of the entire build. I've spent over 300 hours of printing. Uh, I've used about two and a half rolls of PLA, uh, and I was able to do it all on my JG Aurora A5S. So uh, going through printing this, I've got a whole box full of uh, bad prints. Uh, you know, when you get uh, done printing an item and you, you come back and you got to print off like this whole part, for example, it took about 13 hours to print and I got to reprint the whole piece. 3D Lab Print has different techniques on how they want you to print the uh, pieces out. And I'm going to go through some different steps that I use to try to print uh, all these parts out. The first one is the easiest way is if you buy the printer that they actually use, it's about a $700 printer. And if you buy that actual printer, you can just take the G files that they send you and throw them right into your printer and print the parts out with hopefully no issues. But from doing this entire process and learning about 3D printing as I'm going, uh, it's definitely not as easy as just hitting print and watching it go. There's tons of different uh, problems that come up and different failures and you know, it can be all the way up to the very last part of it and then fail at the last second. Uh, and you're not going to sit there and watch the printer for 13 hours straight. You're probably going to set the printer up, go to work or go to bed, and then wake up in the morning and find out part failed. And then you got to, you know, reprint the entire 13 hour piece. And uh, that's going to be really frustrating. So that's one of the first method is just buy the printer that they recommend and throw the piece, throw the print files in there with no adjustments, no uh, modifications, any G code files, and uh, no frustrating like sitting with Cura and trying to find settings. The first thing I started with was uh, using Cura. They recommend using Simplify 3D as a cutting software for all the pieces. I didn't want to use that because it's a $150 software and after spending, you know, $500 on a printer and PLA and then buying, you know, the electronics for the airplane and everything else, I last thing I want to do is spend another $150 on a cutting software that, you know, I'm going to use for this and maybe not ever again. So I definitely wanted to try to use the free Kira. After you've purchased the kit on uh, 3D Lab Print, just go to your downloads and you can just click uh, the zip files and download them to your computer and then uh, I have them just on my desktop here and you can open up each uh, folder and look at all the different stuff that's in there this is uh, the one right from my computer uh, has all the uh, like sticker files and has each individual STL file uh, individually which then you can use to put into Simplify 3D or Cura uh, and they also have the G code files on there so I'm just going to show you just going through the Cura uh, software. I have my uh, printer loaded up and I'm just going to go through, look at all the STL files. They're all here and then I can, uh, I'm going to start working on the uh, aileron part. That's the first I'm gonna, piece I'm going to use. So I can click on that, open it up, and it'll import it in and start slicing it right in the Cura software. Once you get the file imported, you can start working on the actual settings in Cura. Uh, so just go to custom on the side there and then you can start seeing all layer heights and wall thicknesses and start working on it. Uh, have some uh, custom profiles imported. They actually give it to you. Just go into the slicer settings, Cura settings, and you can click those and just add them right into the Cura software. 
this will give you a baseline to start working on your settings, but it will definitely not work with just throwing the settings in and putting it into your printer. Uh, this is just a very baseline setting and you have to go through and adjust each single setting individually to get it to work correctly on your specific printer and your ex uh, exact PLA. I'm not going to go into too much detail in this video on all of the settings I went through because for me, I ultimately could not get it to work correctly. So I don't want to give you guys false information. So if you guys are trying to use Cura, I would just say a ton of people are going to be on YouTube trying to tell you exact settings. And, and if you're going to go scour the internet and try to find exact perfect settings for your printer, it's not going to work. Uh, every single printer, every single PLA is different and so you just need to sit there for hours and just keep trying each single setting and each print. I would just start with one setting and I would change it, see what it would do and go back. Maybe if you're a lot more familiar with 3D printing than I am, maybe you'll do a lot better with it. And uh, here's all my attempts right here. These are, there's 30 pieces here that I've tried to, I spent days just trying to find uh, the correct Cura settings and retract setting, coasting settings, and ultimately, like I said, I was unsuccessful with it. I changed different colors, I tried different PLA, different brands of PLA, uh, I started writing down the actual settings on the pieces so I can keep track of them, and uh, just kept testing over and over and over to try to get the correct settings, and ultimately, uh, this didn't come out with the correct quality. Um, there, I also did a stringing test here. So these pieces here are all uh, from uh, doing a stringing test that I downloaded off Thingiverse. I use them to figure out retraction settings uh, so that I could get the least amount of stringing. Here's the final attempt at printing a part uh, with my own Cura settings. Uh, it turned out okay, but it still just wasn't quite the quality I was uh, looking for. So what I did next was uh, these parts here. These are the uh, wing tips that I just took the G-code file directly from uh, the G-code files they send you for the 3D printer they recommend and just put them on an SD card file, put them in my JG Aurora and it actually printed the part out pretty uh, decently. It's not quite in the center of the build plate because it has a different build plate than the uh, printer that they want you to use, but it printed out the part okay. Uh, but I'm gonna do a few adjustments uh, with the actual G-code files that they send you to work a little better on my JG Aurora. So here's uh, how to edit the G-code files. So the first thing I did before I started editing any G-code files was I opened up their files and I just basically copied and pasted all of them and paste them into a new folder so that way I had a copy of all the files. So that way when I start to edit my own files, if I screw something up, then I have the originals. Once I have that done, I can so go ahead and start working on editing the files. So I'm going to start and open up the fuselage. So for the first time, click open with and then other and then scroll down and find text editor. That's how you can pull it up and it'll be in this text form and make it really easy to edit. And it has like find functions and all that kind of stuff. So the first part of the G code file just has, this is all just text. It's not actually doing anything on the printer yet. To edit the retract files, I'm going to go down and find this line that I'm going to highlight here, G1. And then I'm going to go up to find, find and replace, and then copy the top line, paste to the bottom, delete it and change it 4.5 F4000. And that will change it to work for a Bowden style extruder. A direct drive, so that means that the the driver for the actual filament is up here, and it has this Bowden tube that runs it to the nozzle, rather than a direct drive which has the motor right next to the head, and so it needs a lot shorter retraction settings. And mine's so long, it needs a long retraction setting. Once I have that edited, I go back and just change the name slightly, so that way I can remember which files I've edited. So in this case, I just delete Cessna, and then just, that way all my files will say 152, and then what the actual file is. Now I just continue this process uh, through all the files, the fuselage, landing gear, tail, and wing, and change all the retraction settings. Once I've uh, finished that up, I do one more step, and I want to keep track of uh, how long it took me to build this entire plane. And so I build like a uh, Excel file, and have all of the times written down for each part and I want to order all the parts from sizes so that way I can do the things that take the longest the first and then uh, the smaller files I can do those kind of later on 
Uh, so I go back through and I check the megabyte size for each file and whichever is the largest, I put that as number one, number two, number three, and so on and so forth, all the way through all the files. So that way I have it all in chronological order for what's largest to the smallest file. Once I finished editing the G code files, I was able to print most of the pieces uh, without any other problems. Just uh, put the PLA in and started with the wing and then did the fuselage. And there's only a few other parts that I had to do a little bit more work with the G code files in order to make them work properly. I got most all the white PLA finished up. I was going to start working on the wheels. So the rims are just uh, black PLA. And then as far as the tires, I also printed those in uh, rubber PLA. Uh, here's the roll that I used for that. I needed to do some more adjustment on the G code file for the wheels. I needed to add a prime to the nozzle. Uh, so there on the board, there you can see that little piece of black streak there. That and then also the bed moves out away from the nozzle after the build's complete, I also add that in. So how I actually added those two functions into my G-code files was I opened up a, another G-code file that I already printed out of my, on my printer and found this line here, bring the bed to the front, easy print removal, and I pasted that into my G-code file for the airplane. And then on the top, in order to do the prime and the intro line, I found these three lines right here. It says intro and continue line and zero the extruder. I put those into my new G code file and I just added a couple dashes so I can easily find it. Once I did that, I used the pin and I uh, inserted it into the tire. So this is the main tire. I, I uh, just pasted it in there and then I do the bring the bed to the front for ease of removal and I import that into the end of the G-code file for the tire. Once I get that done, I'll open up one for the nose wheel tire and I'll do the same thing. So after figuring all this out, I figured all this out after I had printed off all my other parts, but if I would have known how to do this before, I would have done this for all my files. Another part that gave me a lot of problem were these ailerons. The part that it hinges off kept breaking off and you can see it makes a skirt, which means it draws one line around the perimeter of the part. And to make this adhesion work better, it would work if you could do a, a raft on it. But I couldn't get a raft to work because I'd have to draw it all in Kira. So this is how I fixed it. So the first thing I did was open up the uh, aileron files and did the same thing I did with the wheels, which is just copy and paste the intro line and the uh, bed, easy bed removal function on the end of the G-code file. So here I'm actually going to show you what it actually looks like without the intro line and what actually happens. So I'll go ahead and start this up, wait for the extruder uh, here to heat up. Okay, and then here it gets to the bed and instead of doing an intro line it just goes right to the actual print. And so right now it's trying to print the skirt. So in this situation, it just isn't printing uh, very good until it gets like the third skirt and then finally it starts to make a nice line. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take that off and then this is what actually happens if I put the intro line in. See, it's not working, not working, then there, it's starting to put a nice speed down and then it goes right in and starts making a good first layer on the print. So even with adding all this stuff in, uh, it still didn't fix the ailerons. The problem that I was having with it was that the part that the aileron hinges off of kept breaking off. It's a small little bead and it just would go a couple uh, layers and then it would just break off. So you can see like in this one, the farther aileron, is it's already broken off. And this closer one is actually still attached to the build plate. So how I'm actually gonna fix it is I basically, I have tape on my build plate, which helps with the adhesion. 
what I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of glue and just put a little bit of glue right there. Actually glue that part to the actual bed. This particular print, I just actually uh, stopped it shortly after this and then uh, reprinted another one because that far aileron had messed up. So here's another set that I printed out and uh, I was able to get that glue on there uh, quicker as soon as I got you know a couple layers down. I was able to put a little bit of glue on there and then I glued that um, pin to the board before it broke off. And there you can see the bed moving out away from the nozzle. And now you can see on this part of the aileron uh, there's just a little glue down there and that's the part that I glued that piece to the build plate. So that way it just wouldn't break off and then now I'll just take those ailerons off there, use my Dremel tool, clean up that glue. A downfall with using their G-code files is now you have to print their set of parts all in one file. So usually like with their wing, they have two parts on each G-code file. And then the fuselage pieces are usually individual. And then some of these smaller pieces like the landing gear pieces and like the stabilizer, they're like a file of like four pieces. And so if you crash the plane and you need to reprint a part, but more importantly, more realistic case is parts failing. So like with the uh, ailerons, for example, was a good one is when I print off their aileron and flaps, they come with the flaps and the ailerons for the right side of the airplane, which is like eight pieces in total. Well, out of all those eight pieces, two of them failed. So in order to reprint that after reprint all eight pieces which is a 10 hour print versus you know if i were to just print off two pieces it'd be like three hours so you have to go through and reprint all that out using their cheat code files but if you can successfully do it in cura or in simplify 3d there's an advantage to you that you can just print off that one single part that you need Hey guys, thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure to look out for my next videos. I'll be showing you guys some more videos on how to build this entire plane. And we'll see you guys in the next one.